Los Angeles. <laughs> Say okay. Then I'm going to select. Let me go into a top view. Here's my new son. Oops. My new son. Select, not create. My new son and the compass. And I'm going to rotate this using the rotate. And what all I'm going to do is rotate this whole unit to where the compass rows is square with the side. Okay? And I should just check on the modify panel and set the date. Date weather setup, and I'm going to make this 12 noon, 9 21 2017. Now I'm going to re render. Sure the shadows are on on this thing. Clear. Okay. All right, I should be able to. back in the camera. Make sure I've got shadows on. So I'm going to solve this quick. So there might be a screw up with my thing, but let's re-render. So th this is the view. This is the view with the camera, with the clipping planes, and we can see the shadow of the metro. We can see the shadows being cast by. Here's your 202 project. We can see the shadows being cast by all the adjacent buildings. And if I go back now and re-render with the other camera, sorry about shaking the world. Uh, <laughs>
two. And there it is with the buildings. Can you see the difference? Mm -hmm. So here we are. We see the we see the the objects, and we also see the shadows they're casting. In the previous one. objects are not there, but the shadows are, and that's because the cliff is set parallel with the ground below the level of the metro. And for you guys then to integrate that information with the information you already, already generated in O1A when you did your plaza plan, because again, you're just generating pixels here. Me. Shall I do it again? Or is there another? Is there another? There's probably other questions. Yes, Gabby. You guys use Shadow Getter? Uh, well, some people just render it in front of you and then trace it. That's fine. Do you want to see that, or is there a way to like, actually get like, a, like a render or something like The question is, am I OK with, if it were me, no, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm assuming and what the instructors are assuming. Um, there is no need to create vector based graphics for this. There's an assumption that you're going to create continuous tone pixel based graphics. So if it were me, I would go ahead, generate your shadow patterns, and then pull whatever, whatever information you generated in doing your plaza plan, probably saved as a PDF. So I would pull that into Photoshop and layer that in, scale it, Render this at a nice fat resolution so it prints properly at this scale. And then pull that PDF in. And, and, and you can just layer the line work in. And then if you need to composite it by you know, using Multiply or one of the other compositing tools, then by all means, composite it in. That's all. That's all. So we get the shadow pattern. We get the, the, territory, the territories of your programs as you lay them out in the urban emoji thing. And we see those together, and we also get to see if the shadow structure that you've generated is creating a kind of relative, or excuse me, I should say, a relevant, a relevant addition to solve the problems that were posed by the plaza itself. Yes, Brittany. Is our 3D model version of our 202 museum supposed to be in this? Is is our 3D model? of our 202 museum supposed to be in this? And eventually I would say yes. I don't think it's absolutely critical that it be there for Monday. I mean, I would just say in a dumb way, like why not? But like the file's absurdly heavy and you need to sort of optimize things as you put it in there. That might be a why not. But if all you have to do is scale the thing in there, and drop it in, why not do it now? Other questions, complaints, jokes? Claire is gonna tell a funny story and make Sydney laugh. So she turns another color. Um, other questions? Yes? They're, they're giving actually um, 
they're not giving the same information. Um, so the, we want the roof plan to look at the artifact of your shading structure as 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 a built piece of material, urban tissue. We want to see how it relates as an artifact to all the other artifacts that surround it. Okay, like we normally would, like all the drawings we made for 202. Then the other plan, the plaza level clipped plan. It's actually something new that you guys haven't been asked for before. And given, if anybody, Juvario is, is in my section, but anybody who is watching our section today. Um, so we weren't just looking at the screens that were made. We were looking at how they filtered light, how they behaved, how they behaved if we combined them with other screens in the class. So this lower level plan is checking the behavior and the performance and the phenomenology of the artifact. And I think one of the main lessons of this whole studio is that the two are related, but they're not the same. How something behaves and how it affects its environment is, is related to how it looks, but it's not the same thing. How it looks is not the whole story of that. So, you know, we had a couple. We had a couple of these screens today when we we backlit them and put them in front, in back of the diffuser and looked at their shadow pattern. Like the result was kind of unanticipated, where you kind of went.